Hello, Chaplain Kelly here. Today we're going to talk about the differences between the Army Chaplaincy and a civilian pastor. So stay tuned for some great information. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to talk about the differences and the similarities between an Army Chaplain and a civilian pastor. Now, I'm talking to you from 15 years as a civilian pastor with the Christian churches at Churches of Christ and 12 years as an active duty army chaplain. So these are my opinions and some of the things that I've seen and come across. And hopefully that's some great information for you as well, if you, especially if you're considering army chaplaincy or considering staying in the civilian pastor. So whichever road you're going and whichever track you're going, uh, I'm going to give you some of my opinions and my observations, so hopefully it might help you in the long run. Now, today we're going to talk, first I want to talk to you, is about location of ministry. Now, as a civilian pastor, the ministry was around the local church. I was doing Bible studies. I was leading small groups. I was a youth minister at times when we didn't have a youth minister. I was leading uh, board, helping lead board meetings with the elders and deacons and get preparing for that. And then in addition to calling on the members and leading small groups and then doing Wednesday night Bible study, Sunday morning Sunday school, Sunday morning worship, Sunday evening Bible study slash worship time. And so I was pretty much all busy about the local church. Sometimes we would have outreach programs and go into the communities and invite them to church. But generally, it was around a small local church. Now contrast that within the army chaplaincy. My flock is a battalion or a brigade and they or other echelons of army commands. Now within that, for an example, a battalion chaplain will generally be the rank of captain and your battalion can be in as much as from 500 all the way up to 1,000. It just really depends on the type of battalion. And so your flock is raw, maybe some Christian, but mainly non-Christian or nominal Christians or pagans or people weird, they call it weird religions. Maybe they worship the spaghetti monster or their Jedi's or whatever the case may be. And, and so they are different. And, and so sometimes it's a little bit raw. In fact, they cuss a lot and they say vulgar things. And so your flock, uh, is very much a unique ministry for the army chaplain. And in fact, one example of that was when my wife came to visit me in my when I was a first term chaplain, the first assignment. She came to visit my office and she sat in my office and she listened to all the F-bombs being dropped outside my office door. And so it is a completely different ministry. You have to be Prepare yourself for that. As a civilian pastor, it was kind of a hard transition at times to go from church sometimes to that of raw ministry with non-Christians and a lot of them. And not only you got the soldiers, but you also you have their family members and their children and, you, and you, you're ministering to all of them. Now, I work for a commander and that's another difference. I work for a commander. Now, as an army chaplain, you, if you're a battalion chaplain, your commander is a lieutenant colonel in rank. If you're a brigade chaplain, generally it's a colonel. If you probably a general and other echelons such as divisions and, and corps. So you have different commanders that you answer to and it's their religious program, not yours. And that's another thing you have to get used to. As a pastor, it's your program. You're the one leading the church. You're the one doing everything. You're the one putting everything on. You're the center of the show. As a chaplain, you're special staff to the commander, but you're one of many staff. And you bring that religious aspect to the commander's ministry, the commander's command. And so you are there to advise and, and to help guide sometimes and help direct, but they are the commander and you obey their orders because you're an army officer is in addition to a chaplain. Chaplains are officers, but you obey your commander. Army Regulations 165-1 says, Chaplains advise the command on all matters pertaining to the free exercise of religion and assisting the commander in providing for the accommodation of religious practices. So my commander is my boss. He or she is my boss, and I will answer to them. When I was a civilian pastor, I was kind of like the lone wolf. 
but here you obey your commander in all things. Now, secondly, I'm going to be where my soldiers are at. At 06 in the morning, there's a thing called PT. It's morning exercises, and everybody's expected to be there. My soldiers are going to be there, and I'm going to be there right there with them, giving them my all. And I'm also out there ruck marching. I'm out at field exercises. I'm at the range while they're qualifying for the weapons. I may not be able to fire a weapon because I'm a chaplain and prohibited by the Geneva Convention, also the Hague Convention, to fire a weapon. But I'm out there giving them moral encouragement and, and building them up and maybe even offering field services for them while they're at the ranges. And also, if they deploy, I'm going to deploy right there with them. So it doesn't matter what type of unit it is. You could be at a medical unit. You could be at an aviation squadron. You could be at a field artillery battery. It could be infantry. It could be a ranger. It could be transportation. Whatever it is, type of unit, you as a chaplain are going to be right there with their soldiers. You're not going to be hiding in your office, but you're going to be out there with them, ministering to them, bringing God to the soldiers and soldiers to God. And so we as chaplains have a vital aspect of ministry. And the three pillars of our ministry is to nurture the living, to care for the wounded, and to honor the fallen. And that's what we are to do. We are to nurture, to care, and to honor. Those are the three pillars, the foundations of the chaplain corps, and what we're called to do as chaplains. And it is expanded different types of ministry and how you can do that. And you have the freedom to do that within the commander's guidelines for you to do that. When I was stationed in Hawaii, I was the battalion chaplain for the 8th Sustainment Theater Command. And as their chaplain, we had boat detachments stay, uh, attached to our unit. And fun fact is that, did you know that the Army has more boats than the Navy? It does. Check it out. In fact, we have smaller boats. They have the larger boats, the aircraft carriers, the destroyers, the cruisers that will carry thousands of sailors. But we have specialized cargo vessels called logistical support vessels. And those are cargo vessels, usually manned by, soldiered by 30 crew members and skippered by a warrant officer, whether a warrant four or five. And so they are smaller and they're cargo vessels going, hauling equipment back and forth. And when I was their chaplain, I would sail with them from Oahu to the Big Island and from the Big Island back to Oahu. It was a fun, great time I had with the soldiers sailing. And that was as close as I'll get to being a Navy chaplain. But it was a great, great ministry, great, great time. And see, that proves the point. We are to go where our soldiers go. A civilian pastor cannot necessarily go on the factory floor or in the office where their prisoners are. Now, what we also have to realize is this, is counseling. Chaplains have to be counselors. And that's a big chunk of my ministry is counseling. Before in the civilian church, it was a lot of preaching, preaching heavy. Now, and, and I do still preach, but a lot of my ministry is consumed with counseling. And the army chaplaincy is going to supply you with the tools to be a better chaplain and a better counselor. In fact, after my first term and first assignment, and which was at Fort Knox, Kentucky, I was selected to attend CPE, Clinical Pastoral Education. And that's a school that trains you to be a hospital chaplain, but it helps you to be more congruent with all of your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions and your actions all together as one and helps you realize your pastoral authority and it helps you to be an overall better chaplain. So I encourage every chaplain, if you're offered CPE, take it. Because if you're a civilian pastor and you have the opportunity to take CPE at a civilian hospital, take it. It will help you be a better minister overall. But as a first term chaplain, I was offered that school and, and, and I went and I enjoyed it and it helped me tremendously. And helped me be a better counselor and learn about myself as well. But also there's other opportunities such as marriage enrichment seminar training that we will go through so we can in turn put on those enrichment and seminars for our soldiers and their family members. And so we are given opportunities. A lot of my counseling is consumed with crisis type of counseling. A lot of the counseling opportunities centered around solution focused counseling. Now, later on as a major, you will be able to 
be offered another school, and one of those schools you can be offered is a marriage and family life counseling track where you will get a degree in that and it will help you be a counselor. More on this later, but overall, you will be trained in marriage and family life counseling and have be licensed with a state. So there are plenty of opportunities for the chaplain to get better training in counseling. And that is something that we all desperately need, don't we? Now, fourthly is an area of education. It leads into the, from counseling to this area of education. Now, when I was an ordained full-time pastor, I was at a small church around 100, 150. They barely had enough money to pay me, let alone for, provide for my health insurance, which the military definitely does pay. And they never had any money for me for professional advancement and, and learning and taking college classes. And so in the military chaplaincy, you are offered that. That's free chicken for each and every chaplain. And not only you have opportunities for CPE and you have marriage enrichment classes, but also you have, as a major, you have an opportunity to go to advanced civil schooling and you'll have tracks in either world religions, ethics, bioethics, uh, also homiletics. You can also be a marriage and family life counseling degree, get an MBA or even a CPE supervisory position. So there are a lot of opportunities for you to grow and advance. And also going back to CPE, I earned my doctorate of ministry while I was in CPE and the army paid for it all. The whole thing is this, the Army Chaplaincy will take care of you and help you to grow as a minister, but also be more educated. And like I said a moment ago, that is free chicken for you than the offer. Now, fifthly, there's a thing called moves, PCSs. That's permanent change of station. Now, on average, ministers stay a long time. They can stay a long time. There's, there is a national statistic out there that says that ministers move around every five years. But I do know ministers who've been at the same pastorate for 25 years. In the army though, we are expected to move around every two and a half to three year period. And as you advance in rank, that goes down and it could be every year or a year and a half. I've had several of those year and a half moves where I was only on station at a year and a half and I had to move move quickly to a different assignment. So sometimes you will have an opportunity to move around the whole country, move around the whole world. It just really depends. It, it depends on the needs of the Army and where the personnel managers at the Army of Chief of Chaplains office really feel that you are adapted and in need for. They will consider things such as your family needs and where your preferences might be or family situation, but they're also mainly what dictates is the needs of the Army and where they need you. And so they take a look at your record and they took a look at who you are and say, you might be perfect for this certain assignment. So in my case, I was brought to Walter Reed. And so I'm here at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. And they brought me here for a specific reason and task. And they looked at my record and say, this chaplain is qualified, this chaplain, we need him. And they put, put me there. And next I'm gonna to go to the ACS program where I'm gonna get my marriage and family life therapy uh, training and counseling degree and so I will be a chaplain serving in that role for three years at a utilization tour somewhere around the world hopefully in Europe but you just never know so God has an opportunity for each and every army chaplain to take it's ministry opportunities these are God ordained encounters for the chaplain and so it's not just like a civilian pastor where you may be in a local church in one town forever this is a very, very fluid type of ministry. And sometimes you move around a lot. And especially as you advance in rank, you definitely will move around a lot. And so you just have to prepare yourself for that. And But the Army community is a small community. We all know one another. We all love one another. And sometimes you will run across those friends that you did you left in one duty station. You'll meet up with again some, several other duty stations later. So you just, it's a, especially within the chapel corps, it's a small corps, as we say. So another thing is that of your oath of office. You know, you raised the right hand. You swore an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that you're going to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That you, in all of your ministry, as an Army officer and also as a chaplain, you take the oath of office. It is an oath. It is a covenant that you make with your country to protect the Constitution 
and all the amendments and everything therein. And just like the oath of enlistment for enlisted soldiers that you're going to obey, and it's a given that you're going to obey all the arm officers over you and you're going to obey the orders of the President of the United States because you are an army officer and you are looked to uh, as that, as a leader. And so chaplains, you're leaders. You're leaders within the military. And as you, especially as you advance in rank, you are looked at more so as a leader. So you are needed desperately to lead and to guide and to help. Now, we ought to have no command authority as chaplains. So uh, we are there to help guide and army regulations. We obey the army regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice at UCMJ. And we have to realize that not only do we obey the Bible, we obey God, but we also have to obey our president, whoever he or she may be. We have to obey all the orders of the officers over me. And we have to obey the Constitution and we have to obey all the regulations and we have to obey all the laws that govern our military. And lastly, that brings us into another realm and that is chaplains are gatekeepers of religious rights. Civilian pastors will proselytize for their denomination, for their faith group, for their church. That's fine, that's evangelism. But we're prohibited in the United States military from proselytizing to our church because we are in a pluralistic country and we are in a pluralistic ministry. And the Constitution clearly says in the First Amendment that we have the freedom of religion. Not the freedom from religion, but the freedom of religion. Therefore, soldiers have the right to choose to worship whomever, whatever they want, or to not worship at all. That is their right. And we as chaplains are gatekeepers of that right. Therefore, I am going to protect the pluralistic ministry that is within the Army Chaplaincy. And so I am there to help accommodate and provide the best ability I can. So therefore, I'm not going to compromise my faith and I'm not expected to compromise my faith to help perform or provide for those service members. But I'm going to offer faith to them. I'm going to help them and guide them. And, and, and if they come to me for counseling and they're asking me those questions and then they, they open themselves up for it, then that's great. That's an opportunity to, to share a love of God in their life. But you have to realize this. If you're considering Army Chaplaincy, it is a pluralistic ministry. And we protect the rights of individual soldiers to minister to them, but they protect their rights and to worship whichever manner they so choose. If they're Jewish, if they're Muslim, if they are Christian, they're Catholic, whatever, Sikh, whatever it is, you are there, help them to find God or their God. So it is with some of the differences with the army chaplaincy than that of the civilian pastor. I hope you've seen these differences and maybe it's helped you and to, be, to decide whether, especially if someone's considering army chaplaincy, to decide whether that, that the army chaplaincy is right for them. There's a lot of opportunities. And I'm going to have a few more videos as I go along uh, about the army chaplaincy. And hopefully you might be contemplating whether to become an army chaplain or considering it in some way or another. And you're praying to God about it. And so I hope this video helps you. I hope it helps you to decide that the army chaplaincy needs you. God needs you to help bring soldiers to God and God to soldiers, to help the soldiers find the way, the truth, and life, or to help them find their faith in a more effective manner. But you are there as an army chaplain to bring that moral support, to bring faith into the mix, to be that religious voice for the commander, that prophetic voice for the commander, and to help guide the soldiers to deeper relationship with their spouses, with their children, with one another, to respect and to honor each other, to perform all the army values and to live by those army values. And also to see that we as chaplains are there as a caring person, a safe place for them to talk to. So I hope this video has been helpful. And if you want more information about the Army Chaplaincy, go to the goarmy.com website slash chaplain and that will help you give you some of the guidelines on what the army chaplaincy is about the requirements because there are requirements to be an army chaplain so i pray that god 
will use this video to touch your very life. And I pray that God's grace will be upon you.